Well, hi, and welcome back to this week's edition of the Pastors Podcast. Uh, I am Bob, joined here with Matt and Todd, and we are coming to you from Maranatha Bible Church, located in Comstock Park, Michigan. And uh, we are continuing our series today on uh, common issues which plague every believer. And we are today wrapping up the series. I believe this is number 26 in the series. Um, so we've done 25 of them on various sins and weights that have uh, that can ensnare the believer. Basing it off of Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Therefore, since we have such so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance or weight and the sin which so easily entangles us. So why do we do that? For the purpose to let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So that's our goal through this, is that we can help people have endurance uh, as, they are, as they are running the race. So... Um, all we talked about can seem a bit overwhelming at times. You know, I was just looking at it this, this morning, and it's like controlling your emotions, dealing with your past, having your heart attitude submitted to the scriptures, sins of the tongue, on and on and on, right? And so we want to wrap this up now. We could probably do a whole other 26-part series. Just on the tongue. <laughs> on that or on uh, a host of other sins that we haven't even covered. So I yeah. feel like we've barely scratched the surface on this. Yeah, yeah, so maybe that's a prelude to what's coming. Uh, this will be our last one for the spring summertime. We're going to take a couple months off. We'll, uh, we'll hopefully kick something off uh, in September, sometime around there. So, um, But that's what we want to do. We want to say, hey, how do we do this now? So, how do we lay this aside? So, we've kind of given some practical, biblical, um, you know, uh, uh, lens as to how we view things and then a little bit of application how we fight those things but now what we want to say is okay you got the individual that says hey i you know i'm realizing this sin i'm realizing this weight that's not necessarily sin but it's kind of hindering me in my growth and now we want to say well here's some some ways now right off the bat this is not exhaustive right this is not a 26 point sermon series right this is three four points that hopefully can apply to, to anybody um, and so don't think that these that that there's there's not more because there is right um, so let's start off uh, get some practical wisdom from the Bible for the common everyday believer because we want people to fight their sins so first of all uh, I think it's important for people to understand that every believer everyone who is born again is in the process of sanctification so how do you explain that to somebody yeah well we've We've been made holy positionally before God because of what Christ accomplished at Calvary. He, his blood, we through His blood we've been given forgiveness of sins. We have been reconciled to God. We have been made into new creations. All those things happen at a specific point in time. But then, if you look at Colossians one, where Paul talks about that, he says, "Then if you continue on, so there's the positional sanctification where that's complete. That's where we're made. We're sanctified." in the eyes of God because of what Christ accomplished. But now there's this lifelong process, this battle, this war that rages on. I mean, the scriptures use a lot of that kind of language to describe it, but now it's this this lifelong process in which we are to be conforming our lives to the image of Christ. And that's, that's something where we have these commands in scripture. We see, we'll talk about this, we're empowered through the Holy Spirit, through the grace of God, but this is now this lifelong process that we set out as a, um, as a believer. Yeah, and we don't arrive at that level of perfection or mm -hmm. perfect righteousness until we are glorified. Mm -hmm. So from the moment a person is a believer until the day they die, they will be in a process of this, and we trust that it's a ever-increasing process of becoming conformed to the image of Christ. I think of 2 Corinthians 3.18 which says that we're being transformed from one degree of glory into the, the next. So, you know, each day, each week, each month, each year, each decade, we should be increasingly becoming conformed to the image of Christ. So that's the Christian life. We shouldn't be frustrated, discouraged by that. Um, there's going to be times when we don't do things perfectly. There's going to be times we fall back into sin but the general trajectory of a believer's life is toward holiness. So uh, that's, that's what we commit ourselves to. And sometimes we stumble and sometimes we fall, but Lord willing, there's this constant growth towards Christ-likeness. 
yeah, and even comes into the, the context, as um, Bob, you had read it a moment ago from Hebrews 12, what's the purpose of laying aside these weights and sin which so easily entangles so that we can run with endurance the race that is set before us. So there's a, there's a race, there's a course that's set before us in the Christian life, and we're called to be laying aside anything that hinders in that race. So there's the understanding that there's, there's a course set before us. We, we want to continue on that course. We want to finish well. Um, and now we, we want to talk about, we want to come together and say, all right, we have all these weights and sins that we've covered. Now how do we lay them aside? What, what's the, what are the things that we can do to lay them aside? Yeah, so this isn't this isn't in the notes, but as you guys were talking, I started to think how would you how would you help somebody along who says, "Hey, you know what? I'm I'm growing but not as fast as that guy. Like is there something wrong with me?" Like, you know, you you peer over the fence, right? And you see, you know, this guy over here has gone from new believer to, you know, seminary graduate, and you've been a believer your whole life and, you know, you still have a problem identifying particular redemption or something, right? <laughs> and uh, and so the, the the point is that what I want what I'm asking is how do you help that person along because they're saying, man, I must have more sin. I must like what's wrong with me? Why am I not sanctifying as fast as that as that other person? How do you counsel that man's heart? Well, I think again, just just um, borrowing from our kind of theme verse here, there's a particular race, there's a particular course that is unique to us that the Lord has set out before us. You know, think of Ephesians 2.10. There are good works that the Lord has prepared before him for us to do. So it's it's not about looking at someone else's track and saying, well, they're, they're you know, if you want to put distance on it, they're half a mile ahead of me in the race. You know, what what's wrong with me is, no, it's understanding that you've been given a course and God has given you grace to, to continue on that course. Um, but it's, I don't think the Christian life can really be about comparing ourselves to others because then we have wrong motives. Uh, we're looking to see, uh, am I as sanctified as X, Y, and Z, or am I living my life for the glory of God? Yeah, that's true. Definitely we grow at different rates, but I, I do think you can detect or identify maybe some factors that contribute to different growth rates amongst believers. I think part of it is a desire you know, there are some people who just want to grow more. They want to become more like Christ. There, there's, a, there's a greater passion and urgency and desire in their heart. And so that person is probably going to make quicker progress in the things of the Lord because they're being driven by a desire. I think you also have discipline. There are some people who are more disciplined with the Christian life. They're more committed to the spiritual disciplines. They're more committed to those means of grace that will um, you know, enable them to make more progress in Christian living and in walking with the Lord. So I, I do think there are some factors there that maybe contribute to the different uh, rates at which people grow. Desire, uh, discipline, um, you know, those would be two that would come to mind immediately. And I, I think if you want to grow faster, we, you, you can grow. I mean, there, there is this, this uh, joint effort. The Lord's going to grow you, right? Philippians 2, 12 and 13 says it's the Lord who's that work in us, but we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So you can grow faster. You can make more progress, but it's got to take some effort on your part and the willingness to avail yourself to the means of grace and, and all of the things that the Lord has given us to, to grow. So I, I think it is possible. I don't think you have to be content and just say, well, I'll never grow and I'll never become more like Christ because, no, he, he's given you the means to do that. That's good. I thought you were going to do three Ds. Yeah. I was thinking of a third D, but I couldn't come <laughs> yeah, up with I'm one. I'm going to say dedication just to scratch <laughs> that itch. <laughs> so you can be dedicated too, just so we can close there that you chapter. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we're all in the process together. Uh, we're all being sanctified, so there's not one believer that's not being sanctified. And, and I think, you know, kind of on a related uh, term is you can find assurance in your salvation because you are being sanctified, because you cannot go through the process of sanctification or be in the process of sanctification without first being saved. And so take heart that you are in, you are in that process. And if you're listening and you're like, well, I don't think I'm being sanctified, well, then, you know, don't. Don't try to be sanctified. Make sure you're saved, right, to begin with. So mm -hmm. all believers are in that, and I, I think that's very helpful to help lay aside our sin is to realize we are all going through this, um, whatever that looks like, whatever process it is, um, and that you can grow at a rate that, you, I, you know, you look at it, you can grow at the rate that you want to grow. 
um, you know, the more that you put in, as you say, you're, you're synergistically working together with the Holy Spirit and by the means of God's word as he's applying it to your heart and you're dying to sin and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, you, you just got to make sure you're still moving forward. So Yeah, I would say that that's a good point. I would say don't be comfortable. Don't get complacent. Don't, mm-hmm. don't become apathetic. Don't just say, well, I'll never be like that person. So <laughs> what's the point? I'll throw in the towel. Forget it. No, that's not an attitude that we should have, right? So if these weights and sins are continuing to dog you, well, then what, what does the Lord want you to do? How, how, what steps do you need to take in order to make greater progress in holiness and, and walking with the Lord? So all that's available to you, but just don't get to a point where you, you say, well, I compare myself to others and, and I'll never be like them, so what's the point? I think that'd be a defeatist wrong attitude for a believer to make because if you look at the scriptures we are to make progress we are to make our calling and election sure you know we are to be increasingly conformed to the image of christ so keep making progress in that even if it's slow and i I think that's something that should actually encourage your heart if you are making progress in the spiritual things of the lord then that should encourage your heart and if you want to make that more uh, uh definitive and 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 more uh, speedy process, well, there are means you can avail yourself to to do that. You know, there's classes, there's discipleship, there's all those things, and so the Lord has those available to you if you want. That's good. Uh, and so then the other thing, next thing we have to remember, one of the other things we have to remember, these are in no uh, particular order, um, but there's always grace to fight our sin. And, uh, you know, when it comes to fighting sin, I think we can all agree, whether it's sin or whether it's the, the legitimate weight that's bringing you down, it gets tiresome. And, uh, you know, there are times where you're just wondering, am I making any ground at all? You know, like, uh, is this is this ground that I'm tilling, is it really this hard, or am I just tilling the same spot over and over again? You know, and, and like 1 Corinthians 10, 13, temptation will provide, uh, God will provide the way of escape also, speaking of temptation, so that, so God is there for us to be able to endure it. Um, also like Titus 2, I was thinking about uh, verses 11 and 12. He says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. And I like that, right? God's grace saves us. But then he, he says, instructing us to deny godliness. So this grace we get instructs us to deny godliness. Ungod- and ungodliness. Ungod- <laughs> <laughs> and worldly desires. Uh, we're not editing that. So ungodliness <laughs> and worldly desires. So it not, not only is it the negative, right? Not only is it the here's what I'm not supposed to do. But then he says, and now the positive, to live sensibly, righteously, and godly. There it is, in the present age. So not only does God's grace save us, but then it instructs us, which I find is fascinating, on what we are to put off, essentially, and then what, how we are to live or what we are to put on. So God's grace is there to help us fight the sin that's in our life. Yeah, so it's that reminder that where salvation is a monergistic work, where it's just God working, so a sanctification is a synergistic work, where we're called, we have these commands, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit is working in us through those means of grace, through the Word, through prayer, through fellowship with the body, through all of those things that the Lord has provided. Uh, but, but I think we sometimes forget how much we've been given, the, the mm-hmm. power that we've been given in oh, our yeah. sanctification. And uh, I often wonder if we, if we say, well, I, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I just can't do it. Are we striving in our flesh or are we actually relying on the grace that we've been given mm-hmm. by God to be able to do these things? Because I'll say now, if we strive in our flesh, we're going to fail. Because what can our flesh do? It can do mm-hmm. nothing. Right. Um, but but if we're <clears throat> coming to God's word, it is is our authority. It's sufficient. It's everything that we need for life and godliness. We have we have God dwelling in us. God, the Holy Spirit, dwelling in us and empowering us in our sanctification. And we can come to the throne of grace for mercy and grace in times of need. If, if we really evaluate the the weapons that we have in our sanctification, uh, we are we are fully stocked with what we need, but are we fully stocked? Fully stocked. <laughs> I, I'm not a military guy. I don't know what kind of terms you <laughs> guys works. use, it's but, fine, yeah. um, but, but we have <clears throat> everything that we need to, yeah. to be successful in the Christian life, but are we accessing those means of grace? Another way to say what you're saying is the same grace that saves also sanctifies. Yeah. That's right. So you know, what Paul say to the Galatians, why would, if you begin with the spirit and with grace, are you trying to perfect yourself in the flesh? And I think what you're getting at, Matt, is really important. I think of John 15, you know, 4 and 5. So how do you take advantage of this grace? Well, if you're saved, you, you have it. But then how do you make sure that you're growing by grace? I think that's a helpful discussion, a helpful thing to think through. How, 
how do we make sure that our efforts at personal sanctification and holiness are not fleshly driven, but are truly the grace of God working in us and through us? And I, I just think of John 15, verses 4 and 5, where Jesus says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. So there's no fruit in the Christian life. There's no progress in sanctification apart from intimate, close communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? That's what he says. You can't do, you can do nothing apart from me. So our responsibility then is to abide in the vine. And I think when we abide in Christ, that's when grace really operates in us. So the question then is, how do you abide in Christ, right? How do you make sure that you're abiding? And I think it's just kind of the basics of the Christian life. You're, you're loving Christ. You're wanting to obey Christ. You're seeking to uh, practice what His Word says. You're mortifying sin. You're confessing sin. You're living in dependence upon Christ. I mean, that's what it means to abide in Him. I don't think it's rocket science, right? It's just making sure that we're walking closely with Christ. That's how grace is operative in, in our lives. And then what's the result of that? I mean, there's, I think you had mentioned this before, but as we're bearing fruit, as we're seeing the grace of God at work in our lives, it gives us assurance of our own salvation. I mean, yeah. what does he say? Uh, I believe it's in verse, yeah, verse 8 my of John 15. My Father has glorified this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Exactly. And then at the end of that, that section, what does he say? These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Right. There's a joy that we have as we see God's grace working in our lives and the life of believers and we see the, the gospel at work in people's lives and, and the, the sanctification that's happening. That brings joy. That brings assurance. That's, that's the, the fruit that we see that, that, that really it kind of just helps to keep us going. It fuels our worship, which then then fuels additional obedience, which then bears more fruit, and you just see this, yeah. this kind of repetition, this cycle that builds up in the Christian life. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I think it's really important to, uh, you know, to, to understand you <clears throat> are either going to be abiding in Christ or essentially self, right? So you're mm -hmm. either relying on Christ or relying on self. And the thing with how do you cast off sin and how do you cast off the weight, you are going to be casting off sin almost automatically by abiding in Christ mm. because that means you're going to be walking in the spirit and you cannot as the bible says obey the flesh or give any life to the flesh if you are walking in the spirit mm. and so when you have sin that you struggle with or you have weight that you struggle with you know ask yourself how am i doing abiding in Christ mm. how am i doing with the graces that i have how's my bible reading how is my fellowship how is my prayer life you know all of those things that god has given us like you said Matt we're just stocked full of so much and i think mm. oftentimes we just don't we we don't appreciate we mm. don't um i don't want to say we don't know because i feel like you know people know like oh yeah i'm supposed to read my bible like if i had a nickel every time i heard that right <laughs> but then they're like ah you know like but to sit down and read the bible it's so much easier to watch a game it's so much easier to play my my video games it's so much easier you know all these kind of things and i would wholeheartedly agree of course it's easier right because that's what your flesh wants to do. And so when you give in to your flesh. But the awesome thing is, is when we, as you said, Matt, what, when we dive in and we're abiding in Christ, what does that mean? Well, now we're proving ourselves to be a disciple. Mm. Like how much greater is that than, than watching whatever it is or you know, doing whatever it is that you're doing aside from this? And then you're not drifting because you can't grow closer to Christ by accident. right? You're not going to grow closer to Christ by saying that you're not going to abide in him. It just yeah. you know, doesn't work that way. And so I think we need to be very cognizant. If we have sin and weight that we need to get rid of and we know it, then we have to start taking steps in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, because First Timothy 4, I mean, going back to what you said, we're not going to kind of stumble into holiness. Right. And we're to be, in First Timothy 4, we're to be disciplining ourselves for the purpose of godliness. Mm. And it's that word discipline, you know, where we get the word gymnasium. It's that spiritual sweat. You, you, you right. have to put effort. Right. You, have to, you have to put work into this. And, I, you know, I was even thinking of, again, that synergistic relationship in our sanctification you know, we have all these resources. Ephesians 6, 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. But then what does verse 11 say? Put on the full armor of God. Mm. So all of these things, all of these resources, if we leave them just sitting there, it's like a soldier going out to battle without his armor and then expecting to have victory without a sword or mm. shield or anything on, uh, 
and, and the armor. Uh, but what, what are those? I mean, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Mm. So if we're saying we want to grow as a believer, we want to be sanctified, we want to be progressing in Christ's likeness, but yet we're, we're not willing to take time to read God's word and apply it to our lives, how can we have victory? Right. Yeah, that's good. And then, and then lastly, I think one uh, that was probably overemphasized in 2020, <laughs> but I think is super important, and I don't think it can be overemphasized enough, especially in this day and age, uh, but don't be separated from the body, right? And when you, it's like you watch the National Geographic, you know, movies, and you got the herd of gazelle that are running. The lions, they're not, they're not trying to get to the front of the pack. They're trying to. They're just kind of hanging on the back. There's 400 of those guys running through the valley, right? And they're just sitting there, like one of them's gonna gonna start to fall behind. And so they're just kind of jogging along. You can see them, and they're just talking to each other. You know, whatever well, kind of sauces they don't, they they don't really talk to each other. <laughs> well, they did in my show, but um, <laughs> cartoon version. <laughs> version. But then one starts to fall behind. He yeah. gets separated from the pack, and what happens? You got all these lions coming up, man, boom, and they're taking them out. You know. And, uh, and so that's why he says here, let us consider how to stimulate one another in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, stimulate one another to love and good deeds. And he says, not forsaking our own assembly together. And I find it fascinating that even in the first century church, regardless of who wrote the book of Hebrews, he says, as is the habit of some. I think that's fascinating. The church has been around for, I don't know, maybe 40 years at this stage, 50 years at this stage. And he's already saying, look, you guys, stop stop staying home watching the games, right? Like, get get to church, right? And this is like the, you're still in the first generation of believers, yeah. and they're already slacking off going to church. And, uh, and he says, what are we supposed to do instead of not go to church? We're to go to encourage one another. And why do we do that? It's because we see that, uh, you know, the end times, Christ's mm-hmm. return is that much more imminent. So so how do, you, how do you help somebody through that? How do you encourage them not to be separated? I think it's looking at all those passages that they, I think a lot of Paul's letters where he talks about the rich truth of salvation and then he immediately going to the practical, he applies it to the body of Christ. And I think of Ephesians, right? So we're, we're saved by grace through faith in Christ. And then what we're brought together as the body, uh, we have all of these commands. We have our spiritual gifts, all of these things, what, so that the body can be building itself up in love. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, we're, we're all members of one body together. So it's, it's like saying, yes, I'm a member of this body, but I'm going to extract myself from the body, ex- still, ex- still expect to function and do well apart from the body that I'm supposed to be connected to. Uh, it's ridiculous. No, we're, we're called to be together as one body, Christ being the head of that body. Yeah, I, I would agree, Matt, that th- there are some who say, I-, I love Christ, but I don't want anything to do with the church. And that, that is an oxymoron. If you love Christ, you will love His church. Mm -hmm. If you love Mm -hmm. Christ, you'll love His body. So to say you love Christ but don't like the church is to say you don't like your Savior. So that's how serious that is. Mm -hmm. So there can be no true spiritual growth apart from intimate, close, uh, regular involvement in the life of the church. I mean, there's no way to say it other than that. Right. You will not grow, and you will not be able to put off the weight and the sins that so entangle you uh, and keep you from running the race if you're not actively involved in a local church. That, that's as clear as we can be. That's what the Scripture says. That's the standard of the New Testament, all the one another's, all the fellowship verses, you know, all the spiritual gift verses, minister to one another, serve one another. All of that is related to our sanctification. It's just not a social club, right? We don't have the church just as an alternative to the Kiwanis Club or whatever. I mean, no, we have... I'm not a part of the Kiwanis Club, but I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what it is. So anyway, the church is not an alternative to one of those social clubs. The church is a greenhouse where growth takes place. And if you remove yourself from that spiritually rich environment, you've just cut yourself off from one of the primary means of your own sanctification. Yeah, because what you said about Hebrews 12, these things so easily entangle us. Exactly. And if we're left to our own devices and we don't have people building into our lives and lovingly come and and applying Scripture to our lives, calling out sin when necessary, we're going to be tripped up and we're going to fall weight or fall prey to these weights and sins and we're going to be tangled and we're going to, we're not going to grow. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I yeah. think the Christian life cannot happen outside of the context of the church. Yeah, yeah because I, I love Proverbs 18. It actually talks about that. He who separates himself seeks his own desire. He quarrels against all sound wisdom. So you see that in the church, right? You see someone who's like, well, I don't agree with you guys. And it's it's not I don't agree with you guys, so let's discuss this. It's I don't agree with you guys. Here's what I think. So what's, what do they do? They leave. Well, why? Uh, he separates himself, seeks his own desire, right? Hmm. And then it says he quarrels against all sound wisdom. So even when you sit down with that person, you're like, well, I understand what you're saying. Let's just look what the Bible says. Oh, no, I'm telling you, this is what I believe. That's your interpretation, right? How many times you hear that? That's your interpretation, and I'm going to, I'm leaving, right? I just can't be part of this, well, you know, whatever that is. And uh, and then, yeah, I love verse 2. It goes so good with that. He says, a fool does not delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own mind. So in other words, I'm not looking to have a debate with you. I'm not looking to have a conversation. I'm telling you, I'm going to come up, back the truck up, vomit what I think, and I'm going to wipe the windows, and I'm getting out, right? And I just thought of that one, just so you know. And, uh, <laughs> a little too graphic yeah, for my yeah. taste. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it was better than the one that went through my head. So <laughs> the, the point is, though, when you see this individual, they the separateness which comes. But why are they separating? Because who are they looking at? Themselves. What's Hebrews 10 say? The body consider how to stimulate one another. Mm. So that means that you can't be mm-hmm. thinking about you. You're thinking about other people. And you say, okay, I know this individual. They're struggling in this area. I'm going to go and stimulate them. And I love this word, stimulate. It literally uh, is uh, is talking about to incite somebody, the semantical <laughs> range. So it's saying like you are being incited like to a riot, right? You're, you're to go over there and, and not just like, hey, how's it going? But you're like, Provoke. Provoke. Cattle yeah. prod. Yeah, cattle prod. There, I like it. There you go. So like <laughs> cattle prod, a little more graphic. So, but And I like that. And we have to stop looking at this as like, oh, this is just between me and God. I'm on the golf course and just me and Jesus, right? No, it's not how it works. Right. You need that body life ministry. I'm so thankful over the last 20 years that the body life has been there for me Yeah. because, man, there's been some great men who have said some hard things and to be able to see that growth in my own heart and then to see other people that are growing as well. And uh, it's just invaluable. And when we when we separate ourselves like that, all we're doing is thinking about ourselves, mm. you know. Mm. Good. So I hope that was helpful. We are wrapping it up for the spring, summer. Um, if it decides to get sunny again, uh, it's been snowing in the last week uh, previous. So uh, we hope that uh, this was helpful and we hope that uh, we'll be able to um, see you guys in the next coming, uh, in the, after the next few months. So take care and have a good rest of your day.